Let's talk about closed angle glaucoma. Angle closure glaucoma or closed angle glaucoma is a glaucoma associated with a mechanical narrowing or closing of the anterior chamber angle by the iris root. Right, so uh, I'm sure you have seen this picture before. Right, so on the right here you can see closed angle glaucoma. Right, so the angle is closed by this uh, root of the what? Of the iris, right? If you look on open angle glaucoma, the angle is open, right? So, closed angle glaucoma can be classified into acute, subacute, intermittent, or chronic, right? So, uh, in this video, we are going to focus mainly on acute angle closure glaucoma, right? We will talk about its etiology, clinical picture. Uh, signs and symptoms, methods of examination, complications, and prophylaxis. We will also talk about chronic angle closure glaucoma, right, just in brief. Acute angle closure glaucoma or acute glaucomatous attack is a sudden and significant increase in intraocular pressure resulting from total closure of the anterior chamber angle that blocks uh, aqueous humor outflow. What causes this condition? Anatomically predisposed eye with shallow anterior angle chambers pose a relative obstruction of the flow of the aqueous humor through the pupil. The pupillary block increases the pressure in the posterior chamber and the pressure displaces the iris anteriorly towards the trabecular meshwork, suddenly blocking the aqueous humor outflow. That's the word, angle closure. There are some factors that provoke sudden dilation of the pupil, right? So that will contribute to a glaucomatous attack. What are those factors? Emotional stress or excitement, uh, long and hard work with a tilted head, watching TV, uh, working on a computer in a darkened room, physical exhaustion, hypothermia, uh, or overeating of the body. There are also some pharmacological uh, drugs which causes midriasis or systemic psychotropics, right? So this can also uh, trigger the acute closer angle glaucoma, right? This is the clinical picture of uh, acute closer angle glaucoma. The glaucoma attack often at night and when the patient enters a darkened room. The low light conditions cause the pupil to dilate, increasing the contact between the lens and the iris, thus narrowing the angle. Right, so these people will have uh, pain, right? So in addition to eye pain, there will be blurry vision, headaches associated with nausea and vomiting. High intraocular pressure leads to corneal swelling, thus edema, which causes the patient to see halos around lights. The full clinical syndrome of acute glaucoma will not always be present. Patient's subjective perception of pain intensity can vary, right? Some patients have milder symptoms, sometimes with intermittent attacks of blurring and hollows without pain. The attack may end when they go into a brighter room or go to sleep. Both of these causes the pupil to constrict and pull the iris away from the drainage channels. Right. What are the uh, signs and symptoms? The patients have severe ocular pain. I told you this. Redness, decreased vision. Uh, colored halos around lights, headache, nausea, and vomiting. The systemic complaints 
may be so severe that patients are misdiagnosed as having a neurologic or gastrointestinal problem. Examination typically reveals conjunctival hyperemia, a hazy cornea, uh, a fixed mid-dilated pupil, and anterior chamber inflammation. Intraocular pressure measurement is usually uh, around 40 to 80 millimeters of mercury. The optic nerve is difficult to visualize because of corneal edema and visual field testing is not done because of discomfort. For primary mechanisms of angle closure, for example, pupillary block and plateau iris, examination of the uninvolved contralateral eye can indicate the diagnosis. What are the methods of examination? Diagnosis of acute angle closure glaucoma is clinical and by measurement of intraocular pressure. Right. Gonioscopy may be difficult to do in the involved eye because of a clouded cornea with friable corneal epithelium. However, examination of the other eye reveals a narrow or occludable angle. If the other eye has a wide angle, a diagnosis other than primary angle closure glaucoma should be considered. Other methods which we can use are slit lamp exam, tonometry, right, tonometry for intraocular pressure, ophthalmoscopy, uh, ultrasound, biomicroscopy. Right, how do we treat acute angle closure glaucoma? Treatment must be initiated immediately because vision can be lost quickly and permanently. The patient should receive several drugs at once. Right, so this treatment, we can divide it into two, right, tropical and systemic treatment. Right, so here we are starting with a tropical treatment. Pilocarpine. 1% pilocarpine eye drops every 15 minutes for an hour, followed by installation every hour. Further installation rate is reduced to six times a day. Right, so pilocarpine is a meiotic drug that causes the pupil to constrict, right, to narrow and help to move the iris away from the trabecular meshwork which opens up the obstruction to the flow of the aqueous humor. The second drug is Timolo, right? Timolo 0.25 to 0.5%, two times a day, right? So Timolo is a beta blocker medication to reduce fluid production in the eye. The next drug is Dozolamide. 2% dozolamide, right? So this is given uh, three times per day. Uh, we can also use uh, brinzolamide, 1%, two times per day, right? So these two drugs are carbonic anhydrase inhibitors, which reduce aqueous humor production. Dexamethasone, a tropical steroid, uh, we can use it to reduce anterior chamber inflammation and the chance of both anterior and posterior synechia formation. The response uh, to treatment is evaluated by measuring the intraocular pressure. Myotics like pilocarpine are generally not effective when the intraocular pressure is more than 40 or 50 millimeters of mercury because of an anoxic popular sphincter. Now, uh, systemic treatment, right? So for systemic treatment, we can use acetazolamide, 500 milligrams intravenously, right? It can also be given 
orally, but the onset of action is not rapid and is given two to three times per day. All right. So acetazolamide uh, is a systemic carbonic anhydrase inhibitor, right? And I told you what it does, reducing the production of aqueous humor. Uh, we can also use manitol and glycerol, right? Uh, so these two, all right, okay, one by one. Manitol, 20%, uh, one to two grams per kilogram intravenously, or glycerol, 50%, one to 1.5 grams per kilogram, right? And this one is given orally, right? These two are hyperosmotic agents for removing the fluid from the eye. We can also use analgesics and sedatives along with drug therapy revulsive procedures like foot baths, mustard uh, plasters on gastronomous muscles and salt laxatives. Okay, uh, right. So we can also introduce another method, very important, laser treatment, right? Peripheral laser iridotomy or LPI is a laser treatment to create a communication between the posterior and anterior chambers by making an opening in the peripheral iris, right? So peripheral laser iridotomy, okay? So if the attack failed to stop within 12 to 24 hours, surgical treatment is indicated, right? Which one? Peripheral iridectomy, right? So it's a surgical or incisional treatment with the help of which a small triangular hole in the iris is created, right? Uh, we can also use phaco emulsification, right? It's a lens extraction. Thickening of the lens contribute to the angle closure. A normal cataract is about uh, 4.5 millimeters thick and the lens implant is about one millimeter so there is about 3.5 millimeters extra space for the aqueous humor to circulate prophylaxis and complications right so firstly our prognosis the prognosis is good with early detection and treatment Vision in the affected eye may return to a level that is almost the same as it was before the episode began. Uh, complications include uh, peripheral anterior uh, synechi or PAS, cataract, atrophy of the retina, that's retinal atrophy, and uh, atrophy of the optic nerve, absolute glaucoma, and uh, loss of vision. Right, what about prophylaxis? Regular eye examination by an ophthalmologist may identify people who are at risk of acute angle closure glaucoma. In some people uh, who are at high risk, a laser iridotomy may be performed to prevent an attack of acute angle closure glaucoma. A few words about uh, chronic angle closure glaucoma. This condition manifests similarly to open angle glaucoma. Some patients have ocular redness, discomfort, blurred vision, or headache that lessens with sleep because uh, sleep induces meiosis and posterior displacement of the lens by gravity, right? So this is what usually uh, decrease uh, the occurrence. Intraocular pressure in chronic angle closure glaucoma may be normal, but is usually high in the affected eye. On gonioscopy, the angle is narrow and peripheral anterior synechia, right? So uh, peripheral anterior synechia are the adhesions between the peripheral iris and the angle structure causing blockage of trabecular meshwork and all ciliary body face, right? I, it's also called what? Peripheral anterior synarchy, PAS. Patients with chronic 
subacute or intermittent angle closure glaucoma should also have laser peripheral iridotomy. Additionally, patients with a narrow angle, even in the absence of symptoms, should undergo laser peripheral iridotomy to prevent angle closure glaucoma. If cataract is present, the cataract removal can dramatically delay the progression of chronic angle closure glaucoma. The drugs and surgical treatments are the same as the ones we, we use in what? In open angle glaucoma, right? So you can click the link on the top right corner and watch that video. Laser trabeculoplasty is relatively contraindicated if the angle is so narrow that additional peripheral anterior snakey may form after the laser. Partial thickness procedures are usually not indicated in chronic angle closure glaucoma. Thank you so much. If you like this video, please make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you feel like the videos we are making are helpful to you, you are free to subscribe. It's free of charge. Until next time, guys.